Hey guys. In the last video, we have created the game over panel which is working perfectly. Although we still have two buttons inside the game over panel that are not functional yet, we will do that later. In this video our main goal is to make a main menu for this game. Currently the game has only one scene which is the game scene. If we play the game, there is no menu, the game starts to play immediately. So, I am going to open the scenes folder. There is currently one scene called the sample scene. So, I will create a new scene called main menu scene. Now we will open this scene. We can see there is currently no game object except the main camera. So, what is scene in Unity? Scene is a file which has some game objects inside. Such as, if we open the sample scene, we can see there is some game objects that we have created in the previous videos. We create game objects to organize a scene for the game. Every scene contains different part of a game. In this game, we have the sample scene which has the actual game, and we have just created the main menu scene which will have the main menu. So, I am going to open the main menu scene again. Because, we will now make the main menu for the game. In the scene view, we first have to find the camera. So I am going to select the main camera from the hierarchy, and take the cursor onto the scene view, now press the F key, this takes the focus to the main camera. So now we can place an image as the background. Currently I don't have a special image for the main menu, so I will place the game background image here. So, I am going to drag and drop it onto the hierarchy. Now, we will create a button called play button. We can see a canvas is automatically created with the button, as there was no canvas. However, I am going to put the cursor on the scene view while the button is selected, now press the F key, so we can see the focus has been taken to the button. Now, we will click on the canvas as we have to set it up for different screen size. So I am going to change this option to scale with screen size. Now we have to give a reference resolution which is 1600 for X, and 720 for Y, we already know these things. The match should be 0.5. This is the match between width and height. This makes the UI objects placed accordingly for any aspect ratio. Now, I am going to place the button at the middle and also edit the button size. We will set the green image as the background of the button. Now, we can change the button text font, font style, font size, and the text color as well. The text would be play. Font would be mom cake bold. Font style would be bold. Font size would be 72. Now we can change the font color. Now, we will duplicate the button and call it exit button. We will place it underneath the play button. We have to change the button background image. I will use the blue button image for this button. We can see the blue button image does not fit. So we have to fix it. We already know, how to get the actual button object from the whole image. Ok, now we will change the button text to exit. The buttons look ok now. 
so we are going to go ahead and add a text which will show the high score. I am going to call it high score text. Now, we will place it at the correct position. I am going to increase the font size, so we can see the text. We should also change the text style to bold, and the alignment as well. Now, we will change the font. Then we can change the text to a sample high score, let's say 25. At last we will change the text color. So, this is our very simple main menu, you can definitely make it better by adding more components. Now, we will get into the coding part to make the button and text functional. I will create a new script called main menu script. Open it in Visual Studio. First we will import the UI, as we have to work with UI objects. Now, we will create a text type variable called high score text. We don't need any variable to make the buttons functional. However, we will set the high score to the high score text in the start function. So, I am going to write high score text dot text. Now we will set the high score. First we will write a text like this. Then we have to get the high score number from the player prefs. We've already done these multiple times. This high score number is an integer type value. If we want to show an integer type value through a text, then it will show error. Because, a text can only show a string type value. In order to avoid the error we convert the integer to string by writing to string. But, here we don't have any error, so we don't need to convert the integer to string. The reason for not getting any error is we don't only show the integer type value, we also added a string type text which makes the whole thing a string. So, now the integer will work as a string. This is why, it doesn't matter whether you convert the integer to string or not. I am going to cut the to string, as the code will also work without this. However, now we will make the buttons functional. First we will make the play button functional. We want when the play button is clicked, the game scene will be loaded immediately. So, first of all we have to create a function called load game scene. Inside the function we will load the game scene, and later on we will link this function to our button. So, how we can load another scene. In order to load a different scene we're going to need something called scene management which we have to import first. So, I am going to import it by writing using Unity Engine.scene management. Now, we can load new scene using the scene management. We've to write scene manager.load scene. Now we have to write the address of the scene that we want to load. First we will write assets, because all the images, scripts, scenes everything is inside the assets folder. So now, as our scene is inside the scenes folder, so we have to write scenes. Now we will call the scene name. The scene name is sample scene, but we have to write the scene name with the extension. If we reveal this file inside the Windows File Explorer, now I am going to select View and click on this file name extensions checkbox, we can see the file extension has been revealed. The extension is Unity. I am going to copy the file name with extension.
Now, we can paste it here. Now, I am going to save the script and open the Unity. We have to attach the script with a game object, otherwise the script will do nothing. So, I am going to create a new game object, and call it script container. We can reset the transform component, although we don't even need this game object to be placed at a specific position. Anyway, we will attach the script to this game object. We can see, it requires the high score text, so I am going to attach the high score text. Now, we will select the play button, inside the inspector we can see an option called on click. We will use this option to make the button functional. Here I am going to press this plus icon. Now, we have to attach a game object that has a script. So, I am going to attach the script container game object, because this game object has the load game scene function which we will use for the button. We want the load game scene function will be executed once the button is clicked. So, we will click this drop down and select the load game scene function. Now, the play button is functional, but we still have one more button which is not functional yet. So, we have to create another function for the exit button, we can call it exit game. In this case, we want the game to quit when the exit button is pressed. This is very simple. We just have to write application.quit. This will exit the game, and it works for all platforms like Windows, Android, or iOS. Now, I am going to save the script and get back to the Unity editor. Now, select the exit button. Make an on-click option. Attach the script container game object. And then select the exit game function from the drop-down. Inside the Unity Editor the exit button will not work, but it will work in the released version. However, the other button will work. So, we can play the game. First thing we can notice is the high score has been loaded. Now, if we press the exit button, it doesn't work, but if we press the play button, yes, the game starts playing. Now, we can close the game and make sure to save the scene by pressing Ctrl S. In Unity, every scene is completely different, there is no connection between two scenes. We can see the currently open scene over here at the top position. As you can see we currently have opened the main menu scene. So, it means every time we open a project with Unity, it actually opens a scene from that project. All the game objects that we can see inside the hierarchy window are the property of a scene. I mean, a scene only have some game objects. We create game objects just to organize a scene. Main camera and UI components are also game objects. When we press Ctrl S, all the game object's specifications get saved for the open scene. However, remember, inside the sample scene we still have two buttons inside the game over panel that are not functional yet. But, I will do that in the next video, as I don't want to make the video longer. So, this is it for this video and I will see you in the next video.